divorce court today. After only four months of marriage, Antoine was ready to call it quits, but a move across country kept them together. Now, Kayla wants out because Antoine's drive has drifted away while he thinks she avoids her wifely duties. Kayla Anderson and Antoine Anderson have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toller to resolve. Testimony in divorce court starts now. Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, the two of you have a 16-month-old and you've also been married for 10 months. You first filed for divorce four months into the marriage. And we are here today because you two simply decided that you can't make it. Mrs. Anderson, you want $2,625 in transitional support, and we will talk about that momentarily. But I will start with you, Ms. Anderson. How come you're in divorce court so soon after you married? Well, Your Honor, it's simple. I just don't trust him anymore. About six months ago, I was suspicious of some activity that he was doing, and I went through his cellular device mm -hmm. and discovered a lot more than I probably should have as far as writing other females on... What, ki what kind of things was he writing? What, what was he saying? He was talking to these girls as far as, like, trying to get to know them, um, trying to meet up with them, um, saying that he was single and they could meet up after work. And this had been going on for two years. Mr. Anderson, is that accurate? No. None of that ever happened? Some of it has happened, yes, but I wasn't trying to get to know them. I was just simply bored. You were bored? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of good books out there you can read. I know. I you know, know, and it got information in them and everything, <laughs> and, and some of them will make you cry, some will make you laugh, they'll all make you smarter. Right. <laughs> Ms. Anderson, do you, have you ever actually caught him doing anything wrong, or is it just a little bit of an e-cheat? every once in a while. It's an e-cheat. I haven't physically caught him. I mean, I suspected that he was doing things just because we haven't been as sexually involved as we used to be. I mean, that contributes to me working full time. I was in school full time mm -hmm. and we had a son. Right. So I really kind of put our relationship on the back burner, mm -hmm. but I didn't expect him to talk to other females just mm -hmm. because of it. That's a very good point, Mr. Anderson. You do say in your papers that you were doing that sort of stuff because as a bit of a revenge for her not really paying any kind of attention to you. Really? Explain what she was failing to do as a wife for you. She just wouldn't talk to me. We'd be in the same bedroom and she'd just sit there on her phone nonstop, just us, me, her, and my son in the bed, and she wouldn't talk to me. She, uh, she was on, I caught her on the phone with a guy and I asked her, what are you talking to another dude for? And she said, I'm trying to get to know him. Mind you, she on the phone. Did you really? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't really trying to get to know him. I just, it was a cover why up. Why would you? I don't know, I don't know. Well, I mean, even if you were trying to get to know him, why would you tell him that? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of a better excuse. I was, he was, he caught me off guard. I didn't think that he was actually checking my phone record while I was on the phone. Yeah. Well, so. why, why? What's the need? You got a whole big man right next to you. <laughs> you got a kid you made with this whole big man. What do you need with getting to know some other guy? What value does that have? I don't know. I don't know. I, he wasn't talking to me, so I figured I could talk to somebody else. We're in such deep trouble here, people. Oh. Um, and, and it's like... You can't stop technology. I get that. I don't want to stop technology. I, I, I'm not an old, old school, back in the day, this, that, and the other thing. Well, I am a little bit, but <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you is this. The ease with which the internet allows you to do stupid stuff needs to be recognized and dealt with on a meaningful level when you get married. You two have to sit down and talk, well, look, I'm not going to do this anymore, I'm not going to do that anymore, and I'm not going to do the other thing anymore. Because it's a slippery slope and, you, and you're just going to destroy your marriage. You, know, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Yes. yes. All right, I'm through preaching. <laughs> what is your primary complaint with Ms. Anderson? No attention, and I'm still young. You know, my sex drive is high still. And I'm 23, 24, she's 24, but she act like she's 40. No disrespect to, you know, but she act like she's a lot older than what she is, and I like to 
go out and do things and she go to bed by eight o'clock even so on weekends you want to go out and have fun you yes. want to have more sex you want to enjoy yourself yes. and she's just she's coming up she middle-aged on you at 24. ms anderson what is your what is your response to that allegation is there some truth to it yes but like i said i was in school i was working i had a son and we didn't have a sitter so i was always at home with our son so that he could go out and be a 24 year old and do those things I, I just pri prioritize our family and school over party. Well, who was the primary breadwinner in the family? It was 50-50. It, it is 50-50? Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you're should. going to school. I, well, I graduated. You graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, who primarily takes care of the, ch the child? Me. Mm -hmm. I mean, huh? we both we do. We both take care we of the child. We both take care of the yes. child? Yeah. Who does all the cooking and the cleaning and all of that? I My do. My wife. You, yeah, OK. <laughs> So you see why she's got less time to play than you do? Yes. Thank yeah. you. That's all I'm Do you get that part? <laughs> yes. You know, if you want to go out more, you get in there, dishes get done in half the time. You know, she's half as tired. <laughs> right? right? I mean, it's not rocket science. You're right. You moved from Kentucky to California. Tell me why. Well, I'm from here, but I went out there just to get away because I didn't, the scenery I didn't like. Mm -hmm. Went to Kentucky, went to school, and I met her. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to come back home. For one, I wanted my family to know my son. So we moved back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were you on board for the move? What, did you discuss it? Or do you were just like, wow, I got to go? No, at first, I definitely was um, apprehensive to it. I didn't want to move here. When we visited here last year, I was like, absolutely not. Not moving to LA. Hated the place. I thought it was nice to visit, but mm -hmm. I definitely didn't, didn't think we live, live here. But after considering what my family wasn't necessarily doing for my son or for me just emotionally, um, I felt like it would be better um, because his family was there for us more um, as much as they could be. More supportive be. than your family was. Right. So, you, so you think it was a good move all in I all? I think it was a fantastic move. It was probably the best thing for us. Next is the memory of an old boyfriend driving Kayla away from Antoine. If the ink on your marriage license is barely dry, but you're ready to call it quits, call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real life, real relationships, real solutions. Divorce Court continues. Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, I'm gonna say, I don't understand. You are two attractive, intelligent people. You've gone to school. You've got a job. Why, after four months, were you filing for divorce? I just don't understand what went wrong, because you certainly don't exhibit it here today. Well, when I first met her, she had a guy that she was talking to. And she, he, I guess he moved, and we met. But she told me she couldn't get over him. And that was three years ago. And after, when we got married, I seen her phone and she was talking to the guy and told him, I hate that ring being on your finger. So that Ms. was alarming. Ms. Anderson, are you talking to that guy? I'm not talking to him anymore, no. But you, talk, you were talking to him after you got married, correct? Yes. Had that guy not moved, would you have picked him? I don't know. I can't answer that. Do you think that... That's what he's feeling over there. Yes, I know. You know, talking to the guy isn't helping that, right? Right, which is why I stopped talking to him. Okay. Is that it? And she wonder why I'm insecure. She always, you're so insecure, I have a reason to be. Well, I do. I have a reason to be insecure. If you're talking to this guy constantly, I say, you know. But has I, she stopped? I don't think she has. Have you seen any evidence of it? I mean. A month ago, yes. A month ago? Mm -hmm. Were you talking to him a month ago? No, not... Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> you know, Ms. Anderson, you need to cut that out. I you mar This man married you. I know. You have his child. You have a commitment to make, to make an effort to make this relationship work. And you playing around like you're 12 or something and I talking know. to this little guy that you have a crush on or whatever it is, it is not conducive to a, a strong structure. And that's doing damage to your little uh, girl or boy. Boy. Little boy. Don't do that. Show up a woman. Don't show up a little girl. 
It's, it, it is a woman's business. And when you make a choice to marry somebody, you have to honor that choice, and you have to honor him enough not to be playing like, like, like you just going steady, and you know, you gonna go off with this cat you're at, at summer camp or something. I read from your papers, and I didn't think I was gonna like you very much. I'm gonna say that. You, th you say, um, I think it's a wife's job to keep her husband happy, She's supposed to be cooking and clean. We are currently living with my family, but she needs to be cooking and cleaning and doing the laundry. I'm a big guy. I still think it's her wifely duties. And uh, you also acknowledge you were unemployed. Yes, I was. Okay. <laughs> so why don't you explain to me how you feel she has failed when, in fact, you were not support doing your job if you want the traditional male-female roles, if you weren't pulling your weight why were you so focused on the weight she wasn't pulling? That's, I have no, nothing to say to that. That's true. You were just wrong. I was. I was. <laughs> you were just wrong. That. I, I feel like I do put too much pressure on her. Mm -hmm. But when we had our own place, she pick and chose when she wanted to cook, when she wanted to clean. So I just felt like it should be Was consistent. she working? Yes, we both were. I've always had a job, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. well, why didn't you pick and choose to clean a little bit? I mean, since you were both doing the traditional male thing of bringing in the money, why does 100% of the traditional female role rest on her? I guess it's, that was how I was raised. Mm -hmm. When the, the women always do the housely duties and I do the labor work. But she's doing the labor work. See what I'm saying? So yes. it, it wasn't, you know, that's just... You, you know, you can't be a traditional dude only when it inures to your benefit. You gotta be a traditional dude all the way. Okay. So if you t you holding down the money 100%, she holds down the house 100%. If she's doing 50% of the money, you know, pick up a mop, brother. All right. <laughs> When divorce court continues, does Antoine's recent increase in size have anything to do with Kayla's decision to leave? Do you think moving to California drove a wedge between Kayla and Antoine? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Mrs. Anderson, you say you find him less than appealing than he used to be because he's, he's, despite the fact that you don't cook, gained a, a fair amount of weight. Well, after we had our son, um, you know, females usually like to lose weight. They like mm -hmm. to get back to normal size. I'm a small female, so I definitely wanted to shed my pounds. And it seemed like everything I was shedding, he didn't mind putting on. And I noticed that, you know, guys gain weight after they have a child, but I didn't think it was, you know, fair. Guys gain weight after you have a child? <laughs> guys. <laughs> I didn't know I that. I noticed that they do. And he just seemed to put on extra pounds. I mean, he was a big dude when we met, but he just seemed to put on a little extra more. And it was like, I mean, I wasn't attracted to him the same. You know, people change over time. I you know? understand I mean, it, that, it, it, but we're still young. And I don't feel like he I should. I can't tell that. You can't tell that she's still young? Why, because she acts like an old lady? Yes. I still look young. That's all that matters. <laughs> you know, you two. Why did you get married to begin with? What was, what was, what were you thinking at the time you said, you know, Kayla, will you marry me? That she was the love of my life. When uh -huh. I met her, she changed me. I, I was going to school and I didn't have my family give me anything as far as from my dormitory, anything. And she was the only one who was there. Gave me everything from my room. When I left school, I lived with her. If not, I would have been homeless. She took me in. I take all into consideration. And then by her having my child, like I, the respect level grew a lot. And she's my best friend. I was always told to marry your best friend, and that's her right there. But it... And in four months, she went from being your best friend and the mother of your child to a woman that you wanted to kick to the curb. Get me there. I can... Okay, you get me there. 
Well, when we first met, he was in school, he was working, and then when we had our son, he decided that he was going to stop going to school, which was understandable because I was closer to finishing my degree than he was. So he took that sacrifice for the family. But time has passed. I graduated. When we moved out here, he said, I'm going to go back to school. Well, this was a few months ago, and it was so simple as to go get his transcripts and, you know, transfer schools. Well, he didn't, and he hasn't been working. Um, he wasn't working two months before we moved out here. It took him two months to get a job out here, which I understand it's harder, mm -hmm. but he wasn't even trying. So you're putting all the pressure on me, and it's like, I'm, I already have a son to take care of. I'm not gonna take care of you two. Right, you right. know what I mean? Like, you're grown, you need to take care of us. You know what I mean? And I felt like if he was gonna keep putting all that pressure on me, I needed to leave. Right. I'm not gonna stay with somebody who I need to take care of when I already have to take care of my son. We have a child, mm -hmm. and you're not prioritizing him or me. You're just like, hey, I'm just gonna be chilling. Hopefully you got it, yeah. and that's it. <laughs> Did at any time your relationship look like that? Yes. I guess I had a young mindset, and I was just, I rather, at the time, I rather be in the streets with my friends than take care of responsibilities. Right. And is that why you filed for divorce? Because all the things you said is a good reason for you to file, mm -hmm. but you filed. He got tired of me going after it. I kept putting pressure on him, and he got sick of it. I was tired of it, and I don't like feeling like I'm belittled. Mm -hmm. She feel like, she belittles me. I did this, I have a degree, I did this in my life, and it's like, I'm not, my life and your life is totally different. Mm -hmm. So you can't compare my life to your but life because we was Honor, raised differently. He mm -hmm. makes excuses. I just, I just said that the excuses. last year was the hardest because our son is just now 16 months. He was needing more Maybe, care yeah. than he did now, mm -hmm. does now, and it was the hardest year of school. Obviously, your last year is your hardest. Yeah, I, I got, let me say this to you, Anderson. You know, you were feeling belittled because you were doing so little. Mm -hmm. You weren't feeling belittled for any other reason than that. And whenever she came at you with anything in the back of your mind, you knew you were showing up weak, so it made you feel even worse. A man who's taking care of his business and, you know, goes out, he doesn't have a degree, but he's out there making large chunks of change or whatever, she doesn't, he doesn't care whether or not his wife has a degree. Mm -hmm. He's holding, holding down the fort. He's the man. Right. So that was you. Mm -hmm. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. If you want to pursue this matter in another court, you may do so, but I'm not going to give you anything at all today, and let me tell you why. I think you're two reasonable people. I think you two people were just too young to have a baby, too young to be married, and you didn't know how to act, and you didn't know what to do. You showed up a boy when you should have showed up a man, but you can see it now. You don't believe in it anymore. You see where you're wrong. You're two good people with a 16-month-old. You have a job now, right? Yes, ma'am. And you have, and you're out of school, right? Mm -hmm. And you got family here who are supportive of you, correct? Yes. People like you ought not get divorced. People like you ought to stay together and fight through whatever it is. You know where you went wrong, right? Yes. So when you leave here today, what are you going to do differently? Be a man. D no, that's, that's too vague. I, I have to, I have that's to hold That's too vague. My what? I have to hold my weight up. You're gonna hold your hold weight up. You're weight. gonna work, right? Yes, ma'am. And you're gonna bring your money home. And you're not gonna run around with the fellas when she needs you support. Now, you, you can't, you can't keep him captive. You I can't know. handcuff him. No, I'm just warning you. I'm just warning you. Okay. But uh, you gotta let him have some fun. He and does. actually, quiet as it kept, you gotta be some fun too. And I know I'm that you're trying. a mother, and I know that you're tired, but you need to. You know, rest up, get her a babysitter or something, have one of your relatives come over and take her on a night out, but you have to invest in your marriage. And in order to invest in your marriage, it takes time, it takes energy, and you have to make a point to do so. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. But you gotta show up first. Right. You gotta show up a man, you gotta ease her burden and calm her nerves, and you gotta get up off the couch. Uh, there will be no recovery in this matter. It is so old. <laughs> Kayla and Antoine agree with the judge's ruling and are working hard to improve their marriage. 
post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.